How's it going everyone? I'm Ryan from Elder Drunken Highlander, and this is our deck tech video for Black Metal, a mono black artifact based reanimator value combo deck that uses its commander, Whisper Blood Liturgist, to assemble an army of big nasty death machines. This deck is chock full of synergies and value, and you can really take it to the bank. So if you're the type of player who likes making your cards interact with each other as the table looks on in pure horror, then this deck is for you. Before we list the litany of liturgist pieces within the deck though, I just want to remind you that if you enjoy this type of content, whether it be from Josh, Austin, myself, or any other member of the Elder Drunken Highlander team, you should consider subscribing. You can also sign up on Patreon for some valuable perks. Lastly, you can follow us on social media, links in the description. Oh. And if you just want to follow my personal projects, you can follow me at Sojourner Official on TikTok and Instagram. But more on that later. Now on to the deck. This deck is designed to be absolutely swimming in synergies and value. Our goal is to slap down a big fat artifact beater, whether it be cheating it in with Whisper or casting it the fairway. Then we do it again. Once we have done that, we continue to attack and churn value until our opponents have no more life remaining. Thanks to Whisper being both a sack outlet and a reanimation spell in, in the command zone, we almost always have access to a resilient and powerful grind plan, and due to our artifact army and the synergies around them, our gears are always capable of grinding well into the latest stages of the game. We also have a big focus on big mana, with tons of rituals such as Cabal Ritual and Sacrifice, and big artifact ramp like Thran Dynamo as well. These mana makers help us power out our artificial death machines as early as possible. What's better than a turn 6 worm coil engine? A turn 4 worm coil engine, obviously. Speaking of worm coil, and friends, we have a cadre of creatures that give us perks for entering or leaving the battlefield. This way we can get maximum value from our whisper ability immediately after using it. None of that waiting for summoning sickness crap. Creatures enter, things happen, instant gratification. The before mentioned Worm Coil is a great example of a death trigger we abuse, while Duplicant is an example of a powerful ETB artifact. We even have cards like the old lonely robot Solemn Simulacrum, who can do double duty on death and entering triggers. Sacrifice isn't the only way we fill our yard though. We have a myriad of discard outlets that allow us to store our creatures for later, when we can whisper for them to emerge from the scrap heap that is our graveyard. Skirk Ridge Exhumer is a great example of this type of effect, since he also makes little zomblins. Those are zombie goblins. For Whisper to sacrifice for value when he gets us back the mere battle sphere that we wrapped up in tinfoil and saved for later. But we don't want our fatties to stick around for long. In fact, we usually don't let them live through our second main phase. That's because if we aren't sacking them to our girl Whisper to reanimate a fatty, we are sacking them to cards like Soldavi Adonate to just straight up cast a fatty. Heck, we might even do both, okay no lost dose. Who's to say we can't sack a Triniform to Priest of Yawgmoth in order to cast Blightsteel Colossus and then use the Golems from the Triniform to return the freaking Triniform? I don't know about you, but that style of play seems pretty freaking powerful and satisfying. Okay, so you know we can't put a deck on this channel without highlighting some weird ass combination of cards. A combo, if you will. Let's get convoluted and explain it. The combo in this deck centers around my old buddy Thornbite Staff and that zesty untap clause it contains. Using this and Whisper, we can churn creatures forever for a number of outcomes, such as Infinite Drain with Marionette Master. Here's how we do it. Start with Whisper and her staff along with a fatty that makes at least two tokens on death. Let's use Triplicate Titan for this combo, because the card's cool. Start by sacking your Titan and some random dude. You get three golems and can return a different random dude. Whisper untaps. Now you sack two of our golems and return the titan. Whisper untaps. You can see where this is going. With the death or enters the battlefield outlet, we just win. Also, you may have noticed my favorite combo, Nim Death Mantle and Ashnod's Altar in the deck list. These guys can also make infinite mana and death slash ETB triggers for us using token producers. Sacking tokens made on death can pay for the reanimator cost of Nim Death Mantle. Simple and easy. Assuming we don't close out the game using one of these loops, we can also just fucking attack. Yeah, it turns out most of our creatures are pretty huge, and you can keep them around to attack if you want to. Bad things happen when they touch an opponent's life total. Blightsteel is in here too, just in case we wanted to embarrass someone with Infect as well. There's one last aspect of this deck I wanted to address. Our interaction suite. We don't have a lot of it, save a few cards chosen to basically just keep us from losing. This deck doesn't want to play Table Police, 
not even by looping Meteor Golem, even though you can. This deck is built to set the pace of the pod and force your opponents to interact with it. It cheats out massive must-answer threats, and if not responded to, will completely overpower everyone in the commander game. The deck is called Whisper, but let me tell you, it fucking yells. Uh, some notable inclusions, these are cards that I found worthy to showcase in this build because they're all stars. Namely, we have Bog Witch, a discard outlet that puts one fatty in the yard and helps to put another fatty on the field. The mana from this guy is strong when the discard becomes an upside. We have Metal Worker, who makes big mana. This guy can plop a fatty right down, no worries. We have Pitiless Plunderer. In addition to helping with Nim Death Mantle math, this dude can also get us mana for doing what we would be doing anyways. Thanks, bud. We have Scarecrone. Uh, repeatable reanimator effects are dope, and this dude can also be sacked for value. Mostly though, he's going to be letting us pay 4 mana for metal work colossus and shit. Pretty cool. We have Final Parting. This reanimator staple can get us a fatty in the scrap heap, and a way to bring it back on the cheap cheap to our hand. Seems solid. Notable exclusions. These are cards that I considered for the deck, and you should consider for your own builds that didn't quite make the cut for mine. Namely, Fortuitous Find. Uh, this card can be big value, but works much better in artifact decks focused on the lower end of the curve. Auric Lull Mage. Uh, this guy is sweet, but just a tad slower than the other straight to bin tutors we have. Also at 4 CMC slot, it's a creature that competes with Whisper herself, and that's a little awkward. Undying Evil, and other similar effects like Kaya's Ghost Form. Uh, while the stuff may seem cute with Whisper, it's a bit too cute. Saving a creature is nice and protecting Whisper is an upside, but overall it's doing the same thing our deck is already doing via Whisper, except with much more restrictive timing. And it's not really worth including as a card itself. Grave Titan, Shieldred, and other reanimator staples didn't quite make it into the deck because, well, they're not robots, obviously. No thank you. I also didn't include more removal slash board wipes, uh, because every time we stop someone from doing something instead of forwarding our plan, we are losing out. We don't have true card advantage in our command zone, so playing the control game can be hard to impossible, even with stuff like duplicate. As for the expected meta, this deck, despite cheating on basically everything, is actually pretty fair. I would say it's a perfect deck for the end of the night at the LGS, when everyone wants to just sling haymakers and turn off their brains. This deck is measurably stronger than a pre-con, but doesn't quite push into unfair or unfun territory. I would gleefully play this deck against any powerful casual decks, but I would shy away from grabbing it in a CDH pod or against new players. Which is exactly why I made the deck this way. The meta at my LGS doesn't have a lot of CEDH, but I definitely feel the need to keep up. Overall, this robot deck is a beep boop bop of a build that is swimming with value and synergies to be abused. It's incredibly satisfying to play, and can be refreshing and rewarding to play against as well. It's chock full of individually powerful creatures and spells that also synergize well with each other. If you like big creatures and synergy stew, then this deck is for you. And if you think this channel is for you, I encourage you to subscribe, leave a comment, and share with your friends. And if you want to chat with us, we have a Discord linked in the description. You can also check our streams on Thursday and Sunday night, where we build decks and talk strategy. You can also find me at Sojourner Official on Instagram and TikTok. There I post my music exploits, projects I'm working on, and other random stuff that I'm interested in. You should also check out my documentary, PPTSD, The Story of the PP Touchers. The link to that will also be in the description. Thank you all so much for watching, and we'll see you next time.